I'm going to show you what the consumer version of the Lordstown Endurance is going to look like. This is going to be the hottest, high-performance EV pickup truck in the world. It's going to make all the competitors look like what they are, cement trucks. So let's get started. Okay, I call this the uh, Trumbull SE. This is a high performance uh, EV pickup truck based on uh, the Endurance, which is the fleet model. Now we have the fleet model, which has got a governor on it, very conservative. What I'm talking about is the high performance street model, the consumer model, the LMC uh, Trumbull SE. I've, I've named it the Trumbull. That's the county which Lordstown is in. So this is the Trumbull, and this is a configuration. This is, by the way, a, a redo of an older video I've done, and these slides are screenshots from that video, but it's the same information. Um, this is a, a consumer uh, versus fleet uh, configuration for the uh, Endurance. It's called the Trumbull. This uses the GM parts bin, which they have access to, as far as we know right now, unless the deal changes with Foxconn. Uh, and so this is a real configuration uh, of the Endurance, a high performance configuration of the Endurance, uh, a great consumer model, better than the Silverado, better than the Lightning. And better than the Cybertruck. Just you'll see. All right, we're going to put options on this truck. The first option we're going to put on is the GM Magna Ride magnetic uh, ride control system. These are a system of shocks that have a ferro fluid in them, and what they do is they change the stiffness of the suspension depending on the driving uh, characteristics. Uh, all you need to know about this is this is a technology that was developed for Formula One. Um, GM has adapted it. It works extremely well. For example, when you go over a set of railroad tracks, the suspension will soften. When you're taking a high G corner, the suspension is going to stiffen up. It's really cool. And this, along with the low center of gravity and um, the four-wheel drive of the Endurance, uh, this suspension is going to tie everything together. And this is something the air bloated airbag Silverado, the bloated airbag Rivian, uh, the bloated airbag uh, uh, Ford, and the bloated airbag uh, Cybertruck doesn't have. They're, not, they're, they're never going to have it. So this is Formula One suspension in this version, completely doable in the Lordstown Trumbull model. The second thing we're going to put on this consumer model is the GMC Multi-Pro 6 position tailgate. This is a really cool tailgate. It's better than the Ford tailgate. It's better than the Cybertruck tailgate. I don't think the Rivian tailgate even has any features, maybe. I don't know. I don't like Rivian anyway. This thing has a step here. It's got a handle here. This does three or four or five different configurations depending on what you want to do with it. Uh, in this configuration, it's a step up. The handle isn't pulled out. Now, the cool thing is it opens inside the truck from inside the truck with the push of a button. Down here, Okay, you mount waterproof speakers, and you got the ultimate tailga tailgating rig. Dude, got your tunes blasting. Anyway, for a work site or uh, uh, tailgating, this is bad. So this is a must-have. This is option number two on the Endurance Trumbull or the Trumbull model. And uh, you guys can do your own research on this. This is the best tailgate in the business in my opinion I mean it's hands down it's the best the Ford 
is a flimsy piece of junk. The Rivian, I don't even think it does anything. Cybertruck, what's it got? A ramp in it? Really? Okay. Are you going to use uh, Well, I want to see how sturdy that is. They do a good job, but they're going to need it because the ride height's so high on that truck. You know, Silverado, I, I don't know. You know, it's, it's still a concept, right? And uh, again, I don't like the Ford tailgate. Now, this is option three. Now, I say this is an option. However, there was some video taken of uh, an endurance at a trade show, and I believe it had this installed on it. This is the Carbon Pro truck bed. Uh, saves 70 pounds, doesn't dent or rust. Excuse me, it's early in the morning here. And this is a beautiful thing. Now, you see this has got the pro tailgate on it right here because it's got the opening little uh, flappy do there. Anyway, the point is, uh, this is great. This is not, I, I don't want to say a plastic. It's not a bed liner. It's a bed. And uh, this is the greatest thing ever. This thing will not rust out. It's fantastic. Now, you know, the Silverado has those doors that connect the cab. And the Cybertruck is going to have them, too. I'm just asking you, what if you have a load in your truck and you make an emergency stop? Say you have a bunch of railroad ties in there. Aren't they just going to blast right through those doors? I think so. I think it's, a, you know, that is not a real truck. But anyway, uh, this is lightweight, so it's kind of a racing option, high-performance option, really great. Uh, better than the soft uh, aluminum bed in the uh, Ford. Absolutely. Uh, this is it for number four option. We got the Super Cruise. Now this is this is the GM uh, automated driving program, and you know everybody's talking about Tesla, and Tesla is great, and Tesla will operate on any roads. This only operates on mapped roads. Right now, I believe, in America. Now, the great thing about this system, and you can see, and they're always improving it, uh, it's hands and feet free, okay? You don't have to nudge it. You don't have to touch it. It has lanes change. All right, it does only operate on mapped roads, but this is going to be a high-performance driver's truck, Okay. And you're not going to want automated driving on local streets and, and when you're driving around or when you're driving through, a, uh, you know, one of the canyons or whatever. You're going to want to drive this truck, okay? Um, but anyway, this is going to be the self-driving option in the uh, Endurance. And again, totally doable. The Endurance Trumbull can have this. It's, it's not a problem. Now, let me just start by saying the Endurance is, is built from the ground up. It's been designed as an EV. And I just want to make one little comment here. Uh, the Silverado sold out in 12 minutes. Ford has so many orders for their EV pickup, uh, they can't fill them all. They're going to have to double, triple production. You know, why is Steve Burns still under investigation? Steve Burns knew what the demand for these EV pickup trucks were going to be long before any of these other companies, okay? And this truck was in development long before any of these other companies. Why is he being investigated for the, by the SEC? He was right. This is evidence that he was right that there is tremendous demand for EV pickup trucks and EV fleet trucks. And as well, Steve Schmidt, was uh, Schmidt, the production manager, former president of Lordstown, was chided for saying that the first two years of production were sold at the company. He's telling the truth. You can see by these order numbers for these other trucks, there's tremendous demand for an electric pickup truck, a fleet truck, however you want to place, however you want to put it. These guys were telling the truth. They just were out in front of everyone else. And I want to add, the Lordstown Endurance and the Trumbull are farther ahead in their production than any of the competitors. And this is a purely designed from the ground up uh, EV vehicle. Anyway, let's just get back into this. So the towing is the same as an ICE F-150. 
two axle trailer, boat trailer. It's got 600 horsepower, 20 inch wheels. I have range 250. I'm going to say 260 plus, and we're going to go over that in a second. And let's just review these uh, options again. Magna ride suspension, torque vectoring, traction control, four-wheel uh, drive. There's uh, Carbon Pro bed, multi-pro tailgate, super cruise, so forth. Um, this is a this is a great truck. Okay, now you got to understand this is going to be the consumer version. I believe this truck will go zero to sixty in three point five seconds. Okay. Right now, the, the present top speed of the endurance is listed as 80 miles per hour. Per hour. That's governed for uh, fleet use, for insurance purposes. I have absolutely guaranteed inside information that they have had the endurance under its present configuration without the governor on it, on a closed racetrack, driving at 130 miles an hour. Not that that's the top speed, but that was what they were driving it around the track at in the straights and so forth, 130 miles an hour. This is not a slow truck, okay? This is a light truck. This is a low truck. Um, this is a four-wheel drive truck with digital torque vectoring, uh, digital traction control, I mean, this is a beast, okay? But anyway, let's just go over here. 3.5 seconds, I'm saying 0 to 60. This is based on uh, an Alafi uh, test they did. Uh, they put it in an R8 uh, Audi, and they got it uh, 0 to 60 in uh, 3.54. I'm taking a few seconds off because the Audi had no traction control, the endurance uh, trumbull wheel, no launch control, trumbull wheel. No torque victoring, Trumbull will, and no optimization, Trumbull will. So, forget this 80 miles an hour. Right now, we're going to say at least 130 miles an hour. This thing's like a Porsche. It's low. These other trucks, you see how high they are? There's no high, jacked up, high performance vehicles. You got to have low, low center of gravity, and that's what the endurance is. That's what's so cool about it. Okay, now I want to go through the cost. I have this at 52.5, uh, which is what it was back when I did this original video. This is now at 55. Okay, I am going to uh, in the next slide show you what what the cost of these options I think are going to be. Um, but in any case, I, right here I do an estimate. Uh, right now they sell the GM Cruise option package, which is the GM Cruise uh, program. And, and we're going to say that this option package for the Trumbull is going to include the options I've mentioned. Uh, the carbon bed comes with the truck, I do believe. I believe I'm correct in saying that. So Magna Ride, special tailgate, and um, I forget what the... Uh, uh, the third one was uh, but in any case um, so we're looking at uh, you can add twenty five hundred dollars to this so we're looking at uh, fifty four five hundred something like that for uh, the endurance Trumbull high performance model uh, after the tax credits uh, the Cybertruck four-wheel drive with self-driving is $60, uh, $60,000. And this is under the old website. They've taken down all these prices. This now has four-wheel steering on it and other things. I'm sure this price is going to go up if this is even available. As um, Tesla does, they're only going to be selling, you know, $100,000 Cybertrucks for the first five years, four years, okay? So, uh, I mean, I have $8,000 less than the four-wheel drive Cybertruck and higher performance than the four-wheel drive. Let me tell you something. The reason I added four-wheel steering to the Cybertruck and the Silverado, and I don't know if the Ford's going to have it or not, that's because these things are cement trucks. They can't pass a moose test. They're too, they're too heavy. 
their suspension isn't solid enough. Uh, they don't have a low enough ride height. They do the moose test. The, the truck goes out of control. I know. I'm telling you, I've done a lot of research on the moose test. The only solution to that is putting in four-wheel steering so they have the maneuverability. That's why they put it in because they can't redesign the rest of the truck. The, obviously, the endurance Trumbull doesn't need it. I have down here, you save $8,000 on that price. Um, this would probably be 6500 something like that. In any case, it's a massive saving, massive saving over the equivalent uh, four-wheel drive uh, Cybertruck. And uh, I don't have the prices for the Lightning and the um, uh, Rivian and the, uh, well, the Rivian 70 grand, you know, the Lightning, what their four-wheel drive model, what is it? It's hard to say. They're selling them for 30 grand over a sticker, right? And um, anyway, let's just move on to the next slide here. There's no competition for this truck, for this performance at this price as a consumer vehicle. And it's going to be sold direct to consumers. There isn't going to be all this malarkey about marking it up $30,000, which is what they're doing with the Fords. And the Chevys. So I have down here the LMC Trumbull, faster, cheaper, better than the Silverado EV and Ford Lightning. I'll add the Rivian in there and anything else that's coming along. Uh, this is absolutely possible, these options are. And uh, using the LMC Endurance base model and the GM parts catalog, okay? Now I have recalculated the cost here. The cost would be for this truck, 600 horsepower, um, uh, four wheel drive, uh, uh, so on and so forth, 62K before the EV credit. Now this is just after the 7K EV credit and many states have other credits and there uh, are other credits involving uh, electric companies or whatever as well. But let's just go with the 7K, which we're not even sure is gonna be with the, uh, what uh, is gonna be the credit. Any K, 55K for this truck. Now, let me tell you, this is going to be 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds, 600 horsepower, four-wheel drive, digital torque vectoring, lower, faster, better handling, Magna Ride suspension. I mean, this is a beast. This thing is going to be so much fun to drive. These other trucks, I mean, if you want to drive a cement truck around, you know, where you got to, you know, take three minutes to turn the thing, you turn it, you're driving it like a big boat, be my guest, you know. I'd rather have a fast, low, light pickup truck that I could toss around some canyon road and have a little fun with. That's just me. All right, now let me just go through a couple things here. Uh, this is going to have, and Steve Burns, uh, uh, this was his designation, and I think they're going to keep this. This is a 3170 battery pack. I believe LG is making the 3170s. These are the same cylindrical batteries as the Model 3 and Model Y. The Silverado has pouch batteries. That's the one weakness of the GM line is the pouch batteries. We all know about the Bolt, but the thing about the pouch batteries is they tend to expand and contract uh, with the heat. They're hard to heat and cool, and, of course, if they're punctured, you know, they have an extreme risk of, uh, you know, igniting and so forth. Uh, but, you know, Tesla and both Tesla and Steve Burns uh, have gone with the 3170 battery pack and better for cooling and so on and so forth. I mean, we all know about the Model 3 and Model Y, how reliable their battery packs are. Now, this battery pack, the stats have been pulled. We don't know what it, now I've previously had a 107 kilowatt hour battery pack. I've heard 109 kilowatt hour battery pack. This is the standard battery pack. Now here's the thing. We're getting, I got down here. I think the range they listed initially was 250 miles. I have 260. You got to understand the, um, Regenerative braking 
on the hub motors is 30%, I think it's actually 33% more effective uh, than using, uh, you know, the Tesla drivetrain. So uh, you can understand these are uh, adjusted with the torque vectoring every millisecond. It's going from power on to regen brake, power on regen, power on regen. So it's, it's creating a lot more power. We may get even more than 260 out of this battery. But you know, under, under normal circumstances, I say two miles per kilowatt hour, so this would normally be a 215 mile battery pack, and they're getting 260. This gives you an idea of the efficiency of uh, the endurance and the weight management, how everything is played out, the efficiency of the hub motors. So uh, now I believe this was more efficient than the Tesla. I don't know if that's changed. But I can tell you, this is on par with Tesla's efficiency. And the beauty of having a 107 or 109 kilowatt hour battery pack is, versus the, what do they got, 200, I, I don't know what the Ford, the, the max battery, in a, and the Ford is like 240, the Hummer's over 200, I believe, the Silverado, same thing. When you have a 107 kilowatt hour battery pack, you can feasibly charge a reasonable amount with a 110 uh, outlet. If you don't have a 220 outlet and you have to go at 110, this is a small enough battery that you can get a decent charge out of a 110 outlet. Now it's not it's not optimal, but you can do it. It's doable. That's the beauty. That's the other beauty of the endurance. Okay, um, but um, this range number, we're going to have to see what the EPA range is on it. Um, because the, the, the regen braking is super efficient and th this truck is less than half the way of the competitors. It's like 4,200 pounds. It's built from the ground up as an EV and as a performance EV. Okay. Steve Burns has been working on electric pickup trucks longer than anybody. And he knew what he was doing when he was engineering this. Um, so just basically, we have a four four motor drive, traction control, torque vectoring. Every mill. This is all digital. It's all computer controlled. Magna ride, thirty percent more um, uh, regen. Uh, you got six hundred horsepower. I got three point five seconds zero to sixty. I believe that this truck ungoverned will do that. It's got a lower ride height, as a Porsche does, as very uh, other vehicles have. Uh, also, as a truck, it's got a solid rear axle. Uh, it's overall just a better driving experience. This is like having an F1 race car with a pickup truck body on it. That's basically what you got. You got underneath you, you got a four-wheel drive, torque vectoring, traction control, uh, magnetic suspension, skateboard with a pickup body on it with a light pickup body on it. This is a killer, 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 killer. I mean, this is gonna be, I'm gonna put it down, it's gonna be the best performance truck in the world. And it's gonna be one of the best performance vehicles in the world because, you know, not much comes close to this. Uh, we're gonna see when the full specs come out. And I have down here, rather than a full cement truck, because that's what you're driving with uh, on these other vehicles. They're gigantic, big, heavy beasts, okay? You might as well join the, uh, uh, the union and, and get a card because you're, you're going to be driving a cement truck. That's what it's going to be like. You're going to be turning that wheel. Oh, oh, that thing is going to, you know, the review on the Lightning, the Yahoo auto expert on the Lightning said, well, it's a bit wallowy wallowy yeah it's got a it weighs nine thousand pounds it's got airbag suspension it's a little, uh, uh. it weighs more than electra 225 back in the day and those things used to drive like a boat i'm talking about the ice car electra anyway these other trucks super heavy it's gonna be i mean if you like boating Okay, and like being in the boat, that's that's what the experience is going to be. You're going to be turning, that thing is going to be wallowing around, and you know, you're going to be turning back to counteract that. That's just 
I'm telling you, I think that's, that's the truth, really. Anyway, self-driving package, uh, full feature tailgate, towing and hauling equals, equals the F-150 ICE. So all around, let's forget the fleet model. And the fleet model has all kind of advantages for fleet owners. You know, the charging, the battery size. The battery can be interchanged and upgraded or replaced. The wheel motors can be interchanged, upgraded, or replaced. Uh, there's fewer moving parts. It's more efficient. It's lighter. Uh, there's less wear and tear. I mean, there's all kind of advantages uh, for a fleet manager. But let's forget about that. Everybody's forgetting. This can be a consumer vehicle and will be a consumer vehicle. The plan was always to start with fleets, which is a smart move. And uh, to move into from there into the consumer market. And there could be upgrades to the seating and carpeting and so forth in the cab. I didn't go through that. Very easily done. But the main thing is, you know, the skateboard. What are we driving with here? Low, fast, hot, four-wheel drive, all digital, uh, magnetic suspension, 600 horsepower, 3.5 seconds to 60. I mean, this is going to be a fun car. And uh, I think uh, once it comes out, people are going to be, I mean, forget about these other trucks. I mean, there's always going to be people that want to drive, for whatever reason, a gigantic, heavy, slow pickup truck, okay? And I'm not talking about guys that are working for a living that got to load it up. In my neighborhood here, you drive around the block, there's all these giant pickup trucks, giant heavy pickup trucks. Impractical. Major metro area. I don't get it. I mean, it's some psychological thing. They want this big truck. This is a standard size pickup truck. And this includes the Cybertruck, which is ridiculously big. I mean, they had to shrink it. I don't even know if they shrunk it enough to get it to fit in a normal garage. It don't even fit in a normal garage. This thing is a standard size pickup truck. It drives like an F1 car. It's the Porsche of pickup trucks. I mean, if Porsche was building a pickup truck, this is what they would build, in my opinion. I mean, it's even better than a Porsche. I mean, this technology is so far ahead of anything that's out there. It's so advanced. Um, I don't think people realize what a fantastic vehicle this is going to be. Okay, this is MXUX. I hope you liked the video. Uh, again, don't forget. Uh, endurance is going to be even a better, faster, cheaper, lighter, more high-tech EV pickup truck for the consumer. Okay, it's going to be a great fleet truck. Wait till it hits the consumers, and then you can go from here on the same chassis, the SUV, which is going to be the Mercedes SUV killer, because this thing is going to be a really bad. SUV as well. Okay, this is MXUX. Thanks for watching.